Welcome back guys in this is going to be the third part of our video tutorial series and you know on, on uh, some of the possible you know coding interview challenges that we might encounter in the interview for the job that we are applying for anyway so you know today is a very classical problem I mean this this is the problem you know I have seen I have seen and I have heard from my fellow developers they get asked so many times even for like sometimes even for like senior level developers but this is more like a targeted towards, um, I would say, you know, junior and maybe mid-level mid developers. Okay, let's first read the question. What we're trying to, uh, what they are trying to ask here. This is, you might have seen this one. This is very in the in the in the different kind of websites and stuff like that. This is our problem. Okay, for the numbers which are multiples of three, we need to print the feet, the string feet. For the number, which are multiples of 5, we're going to print this bodge. For the number, which are multiples of both 3 and 5, we're going to print this bodge, the string. Otherwise, just return the number. This is so corresponding to the problem. What they have given us is we have a, we have a class here, FizzBeats interview question. It just have one method here called public to return a string and this is the name get fizzbeat and as an input parameter integer and of course this is the implementation we have to complete and just for now to compile this code it's returning the empty string so this is your task now as, as you go into the interview this is your employee you're going to read this and of course you're going to implement not only that so they will say you know what corresponding to that class we have a map we have a unit test right here called FizzBeats interview question test and all we have here is just the you know instance of this object which is created in the constructor and now your task is to make sure you write the code you do you, you do that implementation that way all the method inside this unit test class passes I'm going to right now if, if you run the test all those four methods are failing okay and the method is very simple. For example, here is a three. If it's three, it's gonna print fit. If it's thirty-three, it doesn't really matter. As long as the number is a multiple of three, it's gonna print fit. If the number is multiple of five, it's gonna print fit here. That's what these assert statement are saying. And then otherwise, if it's a multiple of both three and five, it's gonna say fit fit. Otherwise, if it's neither multiple of three or five and or 3 and 5, then it's just going to print the string representation of that number. Now, okay, now once you understand, now that's it. Now, now this is your responsibility as a, as a candidate for the job. You know, you're going to write the code and make sure this unit is passes, and you're going to, of course, write the better code, quality code. Okay, let's see how to proceed with this one. Remember, you have very limited time in the interview. Maybe, I don't know, for, to resolve this problem, they might say, okay, you have five minutes, or I don't know, maybe uh, ten minutes. Uh, it depends. So, you start, you know, start reading the, trying to understand the question right there. Okay, for the numbers, which are multiple of three, print fees. So, first thing you have to know what a multiple of three means. Multiple, how do you write to the method the multiple of three? It's basically saying, hey, if you if you divide the number, this number right here by three, the remainder has to be zero, right? That's what the multiple of three means. Then you might start with okay. Remember, this is my, my very first naive implementation. You're gonna see your your naive first implementation. Okay, I'm gonna see if the number in divisible by three. That's like a modulo operator here in C sharp. And three, when I do that, I expect to have a remainder zero. If that happens, then I might say, I might return, as they are saying in the question, I might return the string feet. Okay, I might do one at a time, make sure, you know, at least some, some of my units start passing. Otherwise, I'm just going to say return the number into to a string. I convert that number, the my input parameter right here into this string, and I 
build this protein here and then I go into my unit test and run all unit tests here okay out of four method you know what two of them already passed the method that passed are multiple of others should get the string representation right so multiple of other because it's a seven just a very simple string representation of seven it's a set number 77 a string representation of 77 and also passing for a number that is multiple of three for example this method here okay I'm kind of okay you know what I'm making progress I might now I go I start doing my implementation little by little and then I would go again you know what start doing here for the multiples of five print bars oh okay that's pretty I might you know I'm thinking all right otherwise if it's a multiple of five right here then I would return bodge okay now you know I would go very slowly I'm gonna go ahead and build this and I go back to my unit test and run the whole unit test Oh, I'm sorry, this is not supposed to be bodge, it's supposed to be beads. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. That's beads, guys, it's not bodge, so that's my a typo. That's why the unit test failed. That's really good, you know, having unit test kind of tells you what to do automatically okay now you have three of those out of four all three unit test methods are passing you know, it looks like you're making good progress right and the last thing all you have to do right now you come in here and line number 19 okay for the number we saw multiples of both 3 and 5 print fees buzz fees bees said bees again here I mean to say peace beach so you're thinking okay so multiple there at this point they're looking for multiple of both three and five then okay not bad you might be thinking okay you know what multiples of 3 and multiples of 5 and when that happens you're going to return feed speech and you build everything and expecting you know what you are expecting all everything to pass here so do you think that everything would pass let's give it a try right we don't know until we try it now okay now you basically um, if you when you are in Ross you basically start scratching your head. Why it doesn't pass? My implementation right here kind of lo looks okay, as we I have done as they have asked me to do. Like if it's a three, print fees. If it's five, modulo five. These otherwise, if it's if it's a you know modulo of both three and five, or a multiples of both three and five, print this. And like it doesn't work. Then you start thinking, hey, I mean. <laughs> why it doesn't work right that's where the problem is that that is the tricky part here in a, in a, in a, because remember like the flow of execution where your if statement starts and where does it end well that is very very important the problem is any number because we will never as as we have written our code right here we will never come into here even though let's say our number is divisible by both three and five as we have written like this because 
if it's right away divisible by three, it's going to return fees. If even if it is not by that, it's going to be uh, return five. So, so maybe that you didn't. Okay, you know what? Then this this statement right here, this code should be the first one in here. Okay, so I'm going to go grab this one and make. This is the as a first statement. Okay. Now I'm saying if the number is both divisible by both three and five, that's the first statement in there. And I'm going to return this here. And if it's a divisible by three, then I'm going to return page. And I'm going to have. If the number is that will be five, then I would return these. Otherwise, just return the number representation. Okay. This way, first I will check if the number is modulo modulo of both three and five is evenly divisible by three and five. If not, I will check. Okay, it's only if it is only divisible by three, and if not, I. If it's a multiple of five, even if that is not the case, I will just return the number into the string representation. Okay, let's go ahead and do test. Do a unit test right here. Run the test. Yay! All our unit tests, all the four unit tests are passing. So um, at this point, maybe you're gonna ask us, "Hey, I'm done with the implementation. You can check out how I did," and then. They would look your code, you know, say, so, okay, you know what, okay, it looks okay. Can you, um, and they might, you know, some of the developer might say, you know what, can you write, can you, um, can you customize, can you write it better, this code, can you write in a different, so that, um, can you write a little better, maybe customized version of this code, or maybe, you know, that way it runs faster, maybe uses, you know, fewer cycle of CPU or whatever. So um, you might at this point you can um, okay. You know what? You can instead of you can you know kind of like um, customize this code and say you know what? If something is modulo of three and modulo of five, that is exactly as saying modulo of fifteen. That way you reduce the CPU cycle, write little better code. So instead of doing that. I'm going to say if the number is 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 uh, evenly divisible by 15, any number that is evenly divisible by 15 is also divisible by both 3 and 5. That is the first customization. That's better. So um, of course, you know, anytime you change the code, um, you want to make sure you 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 don't break the unit test. You just right away and go ahead and make sure unit test is passing. That's good. All of, all four of them are passing. Maybe at this point, you know, um, this if else if else kind of looks ugly, even though it's a re more readable. But I prefer to have a tertiary operator. We can write this like this. But you know, tertiary operator is some developers they prefer to write tertiary operator because your code becomes really compact. At the same time, you kind of lose the readability, but it looks nice. But I kind of prefer to have a tertiary operator sometimes. So how can I write the same thing? So I come in here. I'll grab this code. And if that is the case, I'm going to return this guy here. Right? Otherwise, I'm going to check this condition here. Then I would print fetch. Otherwise, I would ch check one more condition here. Whether it's a 
5 in otherwise just uh, this here. And this one line of like this, the whole thing is equivalent to all these if else if else. Okay, I can comment this out for now. And okay, these two are exactly the same thing, but this one is more uh, compact. But I don't know. It's it's a it's a personal preferences too. I don't really say how to write the code, which it's it's you know whichever way you feel more comfortable. Okay. And you know, uh, oh, I broke something, didn't I? Okay, that's why I see the unity is pretty cool. Oh, the my string right here is extra f, that's why I was failing. Okay, all those poor method is you know it, it's all passed. And, you know, code kind of looks okay. Well, it looks better. Customize. Okay, this is this is gonna be the whole implementation of the code. Okay, okay, guys, that is all I want to do. So even though it's a very simple, very simple, easy to understand code, but it's tricky. You know, it, it, when we go to the interview, it's stuff like this always give us. Um, problem in especially when we're writing code in the interview anyway thank you so much for watching the videos guys